Welcome everyone to Cisco Canada's virtual kitchen show. I uh, we're back in the house today with Saputo, so very excited to have Saputo in here, and I'm floored on this subject. And I think it's a great subject that we talk about today because it's definitely something that's going to help you out as we move forward into uh, the holiday season and what we're going to be doing to generate extra sales. So I'm going to move it over to Jamie here from Saputo Food Services. So welcome to the show, Saputo, and also we have Steve. Magui back as our in-house chef for today, and uh, welcome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. As Jay mentioned, I'm Jamie from Saputo Food Service. Um, I'm your trade marketing contact. I've been on the sidelines for the last few weeks helping you guys with your questions on Facebook, uh, but today I wanted to join you live. Uh, Steve's been making me so hungry watching this for the last few weeks that I really wanted to be with you here today. Um, and Steve has some great recipes he's going to share with us. As Jay alluded to, we're going to be talking about take-home meal kits today. Uh, with the weather getting cooler and with some of the country moving back into phase two COVID restrictions, we feel like this is a really great menu application that you need to explore for your menu if it makes sense for you. Uh, so today we're going to cover, like I said, three different types of kits. So the first one's a take and bake comfort food pasta kit. The second one is a date night kit because you can't forget about the parents. And the first one that uh, Steve's going to cover is a pizza kit. Take it away, Steve. Oh. I talk about today. Um, and the whole idea of bringing an experience home and bringing some of those great, you know, around the kitchen, dining room dinner table sort of memories and stuff. I think we have a great opportunity now, especially with what's going on in the world, to bring some of that home. And as restaurateurs out there, I think there's a great opportunity for you to help provide the consumer, the end user, uh, those tools to be absolutely successful and have a wonderful memory uh, for a take, a take home uh, meal kit. So the first one we're gonna do uh, today is gonna be about pizzas. So I'm gonna showcase a couple different ways to uh, involve the family, involve the kids, uh, really have some fun around uh, in the kitchen for a, for a pizza night at home. Um, and then the second concept we're going to do is date night because we can't forget about uh, each other once the kids are, are down or maybe they're at, uh, at Nana's for the weekend. Uh, a nice date night is hard to come by these days because we can't go anywhere. So what a better way to, uh, to showcase some fun at home uh, for the adults uh, in, the, uh, in the group. And then the last one, as Jamie mentioned again, is a take and bake option. I'll show that in a little bit. But all three uh, things we're going to showcase today are just wonderful ways to bring an experience home, have some fun. And like I said, as a restaurateur, you have a great opportunity to help facilitate that. So without further ado, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the first one, which is pizza. So, you know, pizza is something that everyone knows and loves. Uh, it's a great thing to order. It's easy to order, but it's so much fun to make. And there's so many different things you can do with pizza. So many great ingredients. Um, and I can vouch for my kids. They love getting their hands dirty and flour and dough and pepperoni and sauce and all that stuff. So a really cool sort of entertainment, I like to call it, you know, entertaining while you eat. Uh, so this is what we're going to showcase today. So I don't know if Jay can get this can here, but what I've done, and I think it's kind of a neat opportunity, again, for restaurateurs to sort of elevate the offering and elevate what you're actually going to be sending home to the consumer. Remember, this is a reflection of your business. It's a reflection of who you are as an operator. So why not level up? Why not? Make it elite, make it a little bit special uh, so that, again, when people open that box, there's a bit of a wow. So as you can see, I've sort of sourced out some small little mason jars here, uh, which house the ingredients for the three pizzas I'm going to walk you guys through today. Um, and, you know, the nice thing about these mason jars is they keep the food fresh and safe. Um, and it's also a really cool little take home item for the end user, the consumer to kind of have at the end of the day. Right. They can use these for their meal time, but they can also use them down the road for you know other food items or maybe it's crafts for the kids or maybe, maybe you can make something else with them but anyways i think having something a little bit special a little bit more unique will help distinguish you um, from the competition out there so uh, in here i'll show you what i've got the first pizza i'm going to walk you guys through is a kid's pizza it's a stuffed uh, crust pizza so i've got uh, my pepperoni i've got my pizza sauce uh, and i've got my little mozzarella sticks which i'll talk about in one sec so that's for one pizza uh, for the kids, because everyone loves a stuffed crust. And then for the adults, we're going to do something a little bit different. I've got some pesto. I've got some blistered tomatoes. I've got some bocaccini balls and little pearls here, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, just some uh, roasted chicken breast. 
and then some uh, balsamic glaze as well, which will help out uh, for the adult pizza. And then a meal wouldn't be complete without dessert. So we're gonna actually have a little, a little bit of fun with a dessert pizza. This is just an orange marmalade, some fresh ricotta cheese, and this is a fresh berry compote uh, that I made that I'll show you how to finish off that dessert pizza in a moment. And then of course, last but not least, the pizza dough. So some fresh pizza dough uh, that you can send home with the consumers that they can roll out, shape however they like uh, at home. So it's really simple to package up. I've just got sort of a plain uh, white box here. These fit beautifully inside the mason jars, like so. And again, neat and tidy, so it's really easy for the, the consumer at home. Okay, so mason jars are in. You can see there if I go low. Right, they hold beautifully in there. We're gonna place our balsamic, our pizza dough, and our cheese, okay? Inside just like that. And then just because we wanna complete the uh, experience, a couple of delicious milk to goes for the kids and for the adults. And all of a sudden you've got a pretty cool box of goodies to take home and enjoy in your own kitchen. The one other thing that I would note um, for these takeout boxes, these meal kits, is it's a great opportunity for you to also help brand yourself. So why not include inside there, you know, a picture of the final dish, a picture of the pizza, or a picture of what, what it is that you're sending home. Uh, maybe it's a recipe as well. Maybe it's a written uh, description of all the steps involved that you would do at the restaurant level to help the consumer. I think that's a great opportunity with your brand logo on there. Place that inside the box, and away you go. So that's the pizza box as is. Let's show you how to make some pizza. That's more fun, okay? So I'm just gonna show you here. Got a couple doughs ready to go. And we're gonna walk you through the stuffed crust pizza as well as the pesto chicken pizza. So as I mentioned, a couple of cheeses already. We're gonna be showcasing the Saputo mozzarella uh, pizza cheese. As you can see here, this is gonna be the cheese, obviously that goes on, on the top. And then these little guys here, these little mozzarella, uh, stretchy mozzarella uh, sticks, these are a really cool product. These come individually quick frozen. Um, so they're a wonderful item for you as the operator to use because you can literally pull out whatever needs you have for the day. They freeze beautifully, they've got great shelf life. And this is really what makes, uh, this is the trick, the key to, uh, to stuffed crust pizza, which I know all kids love. So we're just gonna go ahead and build uh, this pizza for you. So the first thing, obviously, you're gonna roll out your pizza dough to the size that you like, the shape that you like. There's no rules. No one actually said pizza has to be round, so you can make it whatever shape you like. Kids love to play around with that kind of stuff. And I'm just simply gonna place some of these mozzarella sticks around the edge. And this will be creating our crust. Okay, and then from there, you're just gonna fold in the dough, creating that crust with the beautiful mozzarella. All right. Now it's really important when you're doing this, once you have them all tucked in, just to give a really nice seal. Okay, so we don't have any bursting mozzarella with bakes. Just with your fingers, press down nicely around the edge, sealing in those mozzarella sticks inside the dough. Okay? So from there, in my house, there'd be flour everywhere already, which is all part of the fun. And then we're gonna take, okay, a tomato sauce. Okay, and again, just great fun. Have some music going in the background. Okay. Nice layer of sauce. And again, this is all preferential, right? Some people like it saucier, some people like it less. This is just one example. Okay, from there, I'm gonna take beautiful mozzarella. 
Again, however much cheese you like. I love cheese. There you go, Steve. So, S Steve, if you can hear us, your cam went down on your your cam. There you go. <laughs> we lost it every second. Sorry, guys. I don't know if you could have heard me either. Anyways, a little technical difficulty, but we're back. All I was doing while my camera was loading up again, I was just placing that... Uh, Mozzarella onto the uh, sauce, and then now I'm just placing the pepperoni on the top. And again, this is all subjective to what you like. I know my kids, they're pretty simple. They love cheese, pepperoni. Okay? So simple stuffed crust pizza, those beautiful uh, IQF mozzarella sticks, the wonderful pizza mozzarella. Uh, some tomato sauce and pepperoni. Okay, so from there in the oven, and out you go. Okay, so this is what it looks like at the end. Just a lot of fun pizza. You can cut it whatever shape you like. Nice big crust, full of melty cheese uh, uh, in there, and uh, just a lot of fun for the kids to eat. That's the first uh, the first pizza uh, for the kids. And the second one I'm going to showcase is, again, just a different option, utilizing some different ingredients. Grab my crust. Right here that I rolled out. And this one we're just gonna showcase a pesto chicken, okay? So again, you rolled out your pizza dough to whatever size you'd like. Instead of tomato sauce, I'm gonna base the bottom with a nice pesto. Again, depending how much you like. Okay. I think we have someone from Portugal watching today. So no, I'm sorry I don't speak Portuguese, but thank you for joining he does. Unless Steve, you do. Uh -oh. You know what, I don't. It, uh, it's a beautiful language. Not uh, fluent in that, uh, in that tongue, sorry. But that's fantastic. We have a viewer from there. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so a little base of pesto. From there, I'm going to introduce another beautiful cheese. Okay, so these are those bocaccini pearls, uh, which are wonderful in this application. These are available in food service and retail for those looking. But again, a nice generous coating. Of these, these are going to melt beautifully after they come out of the oven. You know, so this sort of takes the place of that mozzarella showed before. All before. Okay, so just a nice amount. Ah, a few more just because. From there, I'm going to add some blistered tomatoes. They did ahead of time. Just seared these on super, super high heat in a pan, a little salt and pepper. This helps bring out the natural sweetness of these wonderful, wonderful little cherry tomatoes. And then of course, as I mentioned, just some roasted chicken. And again, the possibilities are endless for this kind of stuff, right? So you could utilize different vegetables, you could utilize different meats, um, you know, all kinds of different things work well on pizza, different fruits, whatever you happen to like, fill your boots and just have fun. And again, this is all things that, as the restaurant group, you can tailor. You can help customize these for uh, for consumers when they uh, want to order them at home. So you can maybe create a list of ingredients, things you have in your in your pantry, uh, create really sort of a customizable experience uh, for the end user. 
But again, whatever you happen to uh, advertise, let's just make sure it looks fantastic in uh, in the box when you go. And there you have it. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. Okay. There you have it, looking absolutely fantastic. But we're missing one thing, and this is just going to kick it up to the next level. I'm just going to drizzle this with balsamic glaze. And that sweetness of the balsamic with the pesto and the cheese and the tomatoes, that is a killer pie. Okay? So, again, just lots of fun. Again, this is just one variety, guys. There's all kinds of things you can do with uh, this whole concept. But the idea of creating that entertainment, that entertainment at home, people can't get out. They're dying to get out. They want to go out and have some fun. Let's bring that experience home and just have a blast with it. Okay? So, that's the... Uh, uh, the pesto chicken pizza. And as I mentioned off the top, uh, another variety that, you know, we best in our house, we've got to have dessert. And often my kids want to have dessert first, uh, just so they don't, they don't forget about it. But this is a different, another pizza. I'm not going to show how to build it. Uh, kind of a fun play on a dessert pizza. So all I did here is I took a pizza crust, rolled it out to the, the size and shape that I wanted. Instead of using a tomato sauce or a pesto, I used an orange marmalade. Okay, so... Orange marmalade, beautiful sweetness to it. It's got that nice sort of viscous nature uh, yeah, on the on the on the pizza crust, and then I place some beautiful fresh ricotta, okay, over the top. Melts beautifully, dispersed over the pie as you see there, uh, and I just baked in the oven same amount of time I would a regular a regular pizza. And then to finish it off, this is really what kind of takes it to the true dessert nature. I made a beautiful little compote. Uh, raspberries and strawberries and blueberries and I'm just going to drizzle these over the top and the combination of that ricotta which just carries flavor beautifully it's just a wonderful natural carrier with that marmalade look at that hey a little dessert pizza a little something extra at the end Maybe you're just about to start that movie you've all been craving to watch on TV. Maybe there's a hockey game on. Well, not yet. We've got to wait a couple more months for that. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. Have fun at home with these. And as a restaurateur, let's provide our consumers, our guests, uh, options to really help customize. And again, use this as an opportunity to showcase your brand, showcase who you are, and why consumers should order from you again and again, because you have some fun stuff like this. And the cheeses from Saputo that I've um, highlighted here are just naturals for this uh, for this concept. So, so have some fun, some take-home pizza, and those are the three uh, I wanted to showcase uh, there. Those look so great, Steve. <laughs> yeah, it actually tastes awesome too. I've uh, had a lot of cheese and pizza over the last couple of days, and I can vouch for hundred percent. So. <laughs> nice. I know me myself as a consumer, I would love to participate in this. I have two kids at home and to give them something fun to do um, that's outside of the ordinary during these like strange COVID times is exactly what families are looking for. You know, it's fun. You have to eat. Uh, and from an operator perspective, this is a really nice menu addition because it interjects your restaurant's brand into something that's fun and memorable so that's the key here guys like how how are you going to set yourself apart become part of those your customers uh memories um so i know this is something i would really love to do myself um and another thing i would love to do because i have these two kids and can't get out of the house much is have a date night at home like who's craving that i know i am uh so steve show us how we can do that with one product from saputo with two young ones at home and I'm just going to show you one sec here how we're going to do that. So Saputo has an absolutely wonderful, wonderful um, item that restaurants can order. It's a cheese box. And the box of cheese, or sorry, the, yeah, the box of cheese contains six different varieties of cheese that together or alone make an absolutely stunning cheese board or cheese plate. So I'm going to show you, this is literally what, how it would come to your restaurant. There's six different cheeses. Okay. So the first one here is a Centre uh, de Lune. Okay. A beautiful triple cream. We've got a Cantonier, 
cheese, which is a semi-firm, uh, semi-firm cheese here. Caprano here, which is an aged goat cheese, which is stunning. I'll talk about that in a little bit more, a little bit. There's a blue brie. Uh, there's another goat cheese here. Okay, the Cendrillon. Okay, which is a vegetable ash covered aged goat cheese as well. And then there's a Cerlorier. So those six cheeses come in the box. And together or alone, as I mentioned, they give you an opportunity as a restaurateur to help customize and create an absolutely amazing cheese board or a date night kit for, for consumers. And this is, as Jamie said off, uh, just a second ago, this is something that people are really craving, something for people to do at home, creating a, a wonderful sort of uh, memorable night uh, when the kids are asleep and they can just enjoy some wonderful cheese. Um, I, I would also recommend if you can, including, you know, a, a wine offering or some, maybe some craft beer, uh, in provi uh, provinces that allow that. And let's, you know, let's not kid around. Most provinces have sort of lifted restrictions and all that kind of stuff to allow consumers to have, um, a bit more option for, for take home, uh, liquor as well. So a nice wine or some beer or those sorts of things would pair beautifully with a cheese board. Um, so these come to you as is. The other really nice thing about the um, the kit is it also comes with actually hold it over here to uh, this camera, Jay. It comes with uh, a full description page of all the cheeses, front and back, what they taste like, taste profile, how to cut them, uh, how to portion them, all that kind of stuff. So as an operator, sometimes bringing in multiple items or various SKUs can be problematic. But in this case. Uh, Saputo in this box is providing with, with a great opportunity to help maximize and utilize your yield for these products. And again, up to you as the operator how you want to really customize it uh, for consumers when they want to order in. And then just the last little piece before I talk about the cheese is it also uh, includes some uh, little um, product tags. So if you want to include those as well, and I'll show you how I did those in, in our little kit. Uh, but just again, a wonderful way for consumers to understand what cheese they're eating uh, when they have happen to actually get this at home. Okay, so that's the that's the box And I'll give you a little bit more of an intimate look at these cheeses now because I've taken them out And I've cut them already Okay So these are the six cheeses as I mentioned before and this is just an, a nice example uh, of how to cut them into uh, Each one of these cuts into six beautifully. Uh, so again from a portioning standpoint um, cutting them into six is really nice. And again, depending how you structure um, the, uh, the box for take home, that's up to you. You can portion however you'd like, but six is a nice number. So as far as the cheeses go, so this is that Santra uh, de Lune I was telling you about. Uh, it's an ash covered triple cream cheese. This cheese is ridiculous. I mean, it is melt in your mouth, silky smooth, got some really nice buttery notes to it, but just has a, I call it a nice long finish. Um, when you eat it, it just sort of melts in your mouth. Wonderful with jellies, uh, wonderful with anything with a little bit of acidity to it. Uh, just a really, really great cheese, uh, this one. And I'll show you on the board how we paired that in a moment. Uh, this is that uh, Cendrillon, uh, that, uh, that goat cheese. Again, another ash-covered cheese, vegetable ash. Let's hold it up there. You can see it kind of has that ring around the outside. That's just a beautiful sign of some nice age to it. I would say this one uh, is a bit, of, bit more sharp than the other uh, goat cheese, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, but just, again, great flavor, uh, really rich. Uh, people that enjoy goat cheese uh, are going to really like this one because it's sort of a level up, uh, if you will, from a, from a typical sort of creamy goat cheese. Uh, the Caprano, this is an aged goat cheese as well. This is a firm cheese. Um, this one this one was really surprising to me. I like goat cheese uh, quite a bit. When I tried this one, you know, and I was telling Jamie the other day, it actually reminded me of a sharp cheddar. Um just almost like a cow's milk sharp cheddar, uh, but it's not, it's goat. It is fantastic. This thing goes with whatever. Jams, jellies, nuts, honeys, you name it. This thing is, uh, is a, it's a winner for sure. Uh, really, really, really good. Uh, the blue brie, you know, fairly self-explanatory. It's a combination of blue, cheese, and brie. You can see in the center there, it's got those beautiful sort of veins of blue uh, in there. Uh, just a great cheese as well. Uh, this one melts really well. This one, again, uh, depending on your um, uh, your preference, what you like it with, it's got a bit of that sort of blow, uh, blue uh, aftertone and that nice creaminess um, from
from the brie uh, out of the gate. So really, really nice uh, cheese here as well. Um, Sir Laurier, I would say this one uh, would definitely bring the most attention to your nose when you open it. Uh, it definitely has a bit, uh, a bit of a beautiful uh, cheese note to it when you open it. Bit of a uh, an elegant funk, I call it, uh, when in talking cheese. But it's delicious, and it really, really performs. Really creamy, again, really buttery. Uh, a nice finish. It's got sort of that orange rind, which is a little bit different than the ash covered uh, triple cream. Uh, but again, wonderful, wonderful cheese. Great in so many applications. Uh, and then this last one here, uh, the Cantonier. Uh, again, this one, um, this one's almost almost sweet um, uh, in nature, but this one shreds really well, eats well on its own. Again, on a cheese board, this is going to pair well uh, with all kinds of different things. So those are the six cheeses. Um, again, utilize some or all, whatever you'd like, um, in, a, in a kit uh, to take home. But just a fun way for adults to have sort of a date night uh, and really enjoy some, some great cheese. So I'll show you what I did, um, how I packaged it, and then I, how I did my board. So kind of similar to, actually, let me show you the board first. So here's the board that I put together. Okay. Oop, lost a pecan. I don't know if you can kind of get a pretty good view of that. Um, this board has lots on the go. But again, the highlight and the hero is the cheese. So, you know, when making a board, there's all kinds of different things you can do. Um, but again, if people are ordering a cheese board, let's make sure there's lots of cheese on there and things that go with the cheese, things that um, are really going to pair well, present well, and give the adults a time to sort of graze as they're enjoying their time together. So I actually uh, did this board with all six cheeses on it. Uh, I thought it was a cool opportunity to showcase all six. And quite simply, I've added a little bit of fruit. So I've got some apples and some pear, which we know are just wonderful, wonderful uh, pairings with cheese. I've got a couple of different nuts. I've got some walnuts and some cashews. I've got some grapes, some different crackers. Uh, this is a red pepper jelly uh, here. Uh, a little bit of rosemary and just some breadsticks. And that's it. Um, again, easy for, uh, easy for people to put together. And again, there's no rules here. There's no one saying you have to put that cheese there and those grapes there or whatnot. You know, have fun with it. Put stuff on the board wherever you'd like. But as I mentioned with the pizza box, I think this is a cool opportunity for operators to actually give some guidance, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff, take a great picture. Take a hero shot of a great looking cheese board and include it in the box. That way when people get it at home, they can see what, what professionals, what people in restaurants have done and chances are they're gonna to wanna to try and replicate that because that's what they're striving to have. They're striving to have a really cool restaurant uh, type experience, okay? So that's the cheese board. And as I mentioned, we're gonna package this up in a kit and I'll just kind of show you how, that, how we did that. So again, same sort of box, and I utilized a couple mason jars and a couple different bags. So for this one, I'll hold it here so you can see. I've got my jelly, red pepper jelly in a mason jar. I've got the two different nuts. There we go, in a mason jar as well. I've left the apple hole and the pear hole. I think people have a pretty good idea how to cut an apple and a pear. The grapes I've just put in a little bag. Okay, I've got some crackers, okay, and a nice little box here so they stay separate from everything else. And what I did with the cheeses is I included each cheese in a little bag and I included one of those little name tags. So again, when consumers get this at home, they can take it out of the bag, they know what cheese it is, and they can simply place it directly on the board and, and then understand what it is they're about to eat. So I did that for each one as we put them in the box, like so. And then a couple breadsticks on their own and a couple pieces of rosemary, okay? So again, all of the items in that box were on that board I just showed. And again, when people get this at home, they're gonna open up, they're gonna see it's packaged nicely, it's got, it's got a great look to it. And again, if you include a picture and some instructions and again, a brand image of your restaurant, it's just going to create a memorable experience for people when they uh, when they get home. And as I mentioned off the top, if you want to throw in a bottle of white, a nice Sauvignon Blanc, or you know a nice craft beer of your choice to go in uh, again, depending on the on the customer uh, and provincial regulations, which I'm not the authority, but I know where I live here, it's pretty pretty loose these days with what you can actually uh, send home from a restaurant. So, uh, which is great, and we thank the governing bodies for that. That's your uh, that's your cheese box date night uh, kit.
And as I mentioned, have some fun with this. People are, are yearning for this type of uh, type of experience. Have some fun. You know, I think people when they when they order and they want to order from you at the restaurant, the more unique and the more um, unique you can be with this type of stuff, um, the better you're going to do and the better sales you're going to have as well. Okay, that's your cheese board. Enjoy. <laughs> that's awesome, Steve. With concepts like this, it's easy to see how the meal kit segment's growing. I mean, so much innovation and opportunity that you know you can really just transform um, any of your menu items or um, any of your specialties into a beautiful meal kit. Um, and you're not limited to family night or date night. You know, there's so many possibilities. Um, and one that we're really seeing that's starting to trend is. Uh, take and bake concepts. That's actually the number one most added entree uh, item to Canadian menus right now. Um, parents, people, after work, you're stressed out. There's a lot going on. Um, sometimes you, as a consumer, just don't want to be in the kitchen through the week. So what better way to solve that uh, problem in a consumer's life by providing, you know, meal kit opportunities where the meals already kit, uh, already cooked, and the consumer just needs to pop it in their oven really like eliminating that weeknight stress. And again, in interjecting your brand's, uh, your restaurant's brand into your consumer's home and providing a solution that consumers are looking for. So, and we know comfort food's trending as well. So we're gonna kind of merge those ideas next and Steve's gonna show us uh, some yummy take and bake pasta. Uh, this is pretty killer. This is, uh, this is definitely a meal for a cold night. Stick to the rib, lots of cheese, lots of yumminess going on. Um, absolutely fantastic. But Jamie, to your point, I mean, this is one of those things where you know people are busy, there's lots on the go. Um, the more convenient and the more uh, accessibility to really great restaurant quality comfort food we can we can provide uh, for for home consumers right now, the better. Um, and you know, again, up to you, up to your operation, what you do, what you specialize in. Uh, but finding a way to connect to consumers, finding a way to sort of uh, connect through food um, is just a really, really important thing to do. So so what I, I'm just going to show you really quickly, I'm not going to go through all the steps. I'm going to walk through it and show you sort of the finished product. Uh, is that take and bake? So I just took a, a classic macaroni and cheese and kicked it up a bit. Um, everyone loves mac and cheese. Again, there's so many things you can do with macaroni and cheese. There's so many different ingredients you can incorporate with macaroni and cheese. Um, so what I did is I caramelized some onion, I crispied up some kale, I crisped up some bacon, and I incorporated it into some beautiful, I used fusilli uh, noodles instead of macaroni, just something a little bit different. Uh, made a really, really basic sort of bechamel sauce, a um, little bit of Dijon mustard in there, and essentially filled up a you know uh, foil baking dish uh, with the product, okay? So made that all in advance, all in one big uh, big pot, filled this up about three quarters um, uh, to the top. And then what you see on the top here, before I take it out of the oven, this is just a little breadcrumb layer. And what the breadcrumb layer is going to do is it's going to provide a nice little crispness, a nice little crunch when you sort of bite into that mac and cheese. I kind of do it and I'll show you in a sec. Uh, and this is simply uh, uh, panko breadcrumbs. Uh, freshly shaved Parmesan cheese, another great Saputo product that I used for that, uh, as well as some melted butter. So in a bowl, just blend in the panko crumbs, the Parmesan cheese, and the butter, and then place that over the top of your, your macaroni noodle uh, blend, if you will, and then place that in the oven. From fresh, it's going to take probably 35 to 40 minutes at about 350 to get the internal temperature nice and warm and that cheese all melted, etc. Uh, and then just before it's finished, what I did is I took some of that pizza mozzarella uh, that we showcased earlier in the show, and I placed that over the top just to get nice and brown and gooey. And I'm going to take one out of the oven, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. But really, really set it and forget it. It comes to you at, from the restaurant, home, place it in the oven, get everything else ready for dinner, and then carve into it and have just a really awesome comfort food, stay home take and bake uh, meal option. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like as I take it out of the oven. Here. Oh yeah. Look at that bad boy. Where are we? There we are. So that mozzarella is beautiful, golden brown. I know I'm gonna cut in this, it's just gonna be gooey, gooey goodness. Um, but that's the dish. So think about it, we're gonna have that mozzarella, that nice layer of sort of crunched breadcrumb, 
and all that wonderful, wonderful uh, cheese, which I utilized. Uh, the cheddar, okay, so beautiful, nice, medium cheddar I utilized uh, for my uh, cheese sauce there. And that's going to go on a plate and I'll show you what it looks like. First thing I do, is I'm just going to place on my plate just some greens. I've just lightly dressed this with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Okay. Like so. And then carve into this bad boy. Oh yeah. Come on, really? Look at this. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but not because I made it, but that looks, I mean, that is awesome. Like that's just a kick-ass mac and cheese. There's crispy bacon, there's caramelized onion, there's some crispy kale. Look at that layer of beautiful mozzarella. It's melted on the top, that little crispy breadcrumb. You know, I don't know, Saturday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, doesn't matter, but uh, this is a pretty cool dish. And again, Jamie's point earlier, what a great way to provide uh, the home consumer, the option of having a really cool dish. And again, you can put anything in this. And in fact, uh, we talked about cheese boards earlier. I actually put some blue brie in this one um, because I had some extra extra pieces left. So, you know, remember bringing in skews, bringing in those kinds of things. All the cheeses we talked about earlier on the cheese board, they all work in here too. So from a portioning standpoint, don't be afraid, you know, to give one of, two of, three of pieces of, of the cheese because you have it out for it. You have another way, another way to utilize it in your operation. So, uh, so have some fun with it. Again, this is just one example. You could put pulled pork in here. You could put prime rib in there. You could put, you, you could make it hundred percent vegetarian. You could put, you know, but whatever you promote and whatever you want to do, make it awesome, make it fantastic. So that when the guests sink their teeth into this thing, they have no other option, but to come back to you next time for more options and great, great food. So, so that's just an example of the take and bake. I'm going to eat this in a minute when we're off air because uh, my mouth is salivating. It smells so good. And I happen to have a beer here as well. So I might crack into that. And maybe I'll have some wine. And who knows? We're just going to keep having fun over here. So uh, so there you have it. You know, there's sort of three options, three ways uh, to really help elevate uh, take-home kits, meal kits, if you will. Now is the time to do it, guys. Unfortunately, this on TV, but unfortunately, this damn thing's not going away anytime soon. So... Let's give the guests that environment at home, that restaurant quality experience at home. Have some fun with it, whether it be through pizza night, whether it be, be through date night, which we all want and need, uh, or this take and bake option. So have fun, make kick-ass food, and uh, rock it out in the kitchen. Thanks so much, Steve. That all looks so good. And it's 1142 here in the greater Toronto area. and. I am starving now, and I wish you could send me some of that mac and cheese somehow. I got lots, so <laughs> figure it out. I know where you live. I could maybe make a little road trip. Yeah, let's do it. Looks so so good. Thank you so much for showing these kits. We hope we inspired you guys today. Um, meal kits are a new thing, or, or at least a, a thing that's really increasing. Uh, and we hope that you know this inspired you and on how you could add this to to your menu. Um, and I'll just do a quick plug. If you guys are looking for any other ideas, recipe inspiration, uh, product information, we even have a really great COVID resource section that offers like business solutions for you during this strange time. Head over to saputofoodservice.ca. A lot of great, great info there. Thanks so much. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jamie and Chef Steve. Just awesome ideas. Great stuff. We have so much more coming uh, we have another show tonight on our, S on our Cisco Virtual Kitchen show um, with Beyond Meat out of live out of California. So we'll be down there with their chef, which is also one of the chefs that's on Netflix and one of the top shows that are on Netflix right now. So you may want to tune in, check that out. But we got lots of great ideas really to help you with new business and um, to really get through what we're, we're dealing with right now. Now, also, thanks to everyone that filled out our surveys that we had today's shows. On today's show, we had a lot of we had some new customers here today. So this is what makes us different at Cisco, and we definitely want to help you out. That's all. That's all we're here for. So great stuff. Thanks so much, Saputo. You guys rock. And uh, check us out. We'll be back again tonight and uh, next week. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Go out and eat out.
wrong button. 